Native Backup Encryption has been around since SQL Server 2014. In this nugget, we're going to look at the process for creating backups that are encrypted using both SQL Server Management Studio and Transact SQL. Here we are in SQL Server Management Studio where we have a connection in Object Explorer to our named instance on this database server. We're going to be working inside of the NLDB database, which currently has nothing in it. So our first task here is to create a table inside of that database so we have something to test our backups with. So I'm going to go ahead and create this table, add a little bit of data to it. And now just to, just to uh, verify here, look at that. All right, so we're good to go. Now, the first thing we need to do before we can perform any backups is create a database master key in the master database. Let's do that first. So let's create a master key and encrypt it by password. All right, there we go. We have that now created in the master database. And we're also going to need a certificate here. And we're going to create a self-signed certificate right inside of SQL Server. We'll call it SQL Nug Backup Cert with our subject there. So let's also create that. And that's really the initial setup. So this certificate is protected by the database master key. And both of these are required in order to create the backup. And the certificate is required to restore the backup to this or any other SQL Server instance. Now, before we go any further with Transact SQL, let me show you how we can create a backup using the graphical user interface. So we're going to right click on our database, NLDB. I'm going to head down to tasks and up to the backup option. This will launch the native backup dialog. Now, it's going to default the database to what we right clicked on there. We're going to go over all, we have a whole module dedicated to backup strategies and restoring. So we're going to pretty much stick with the defaults here and just create a full backup. But I'm going to uh, back this up to a disk and I'm going to remove this and add our own path here uh, just so it's uh, much easier to get to. And I created a backup directory inside of the Nugget Lab directory. There it is. So we'll be storing our backups here. Let's call this one NLDB underscore full dot back. And we'll hit OK. And OK one more time. And there it is. Now, if we head down to media options, one thing you will need to do in the GUI here is back this up to a new media set and we can give it a name. We'll call this NLDB backups. Now, if we head down to backup options, check it out. And if you did not provide a media set here, a new media set, and we head down here, it'll actually give you a little message here that uh, you won't be able to do this unless you choose a new media set. So let me go back to that, back to backup options. And now we can encrypt our backup. This is all we need to do. Choose our algorithm here. Uh, from weakest to strongest here, let's go AES-256, and our certificate. And look at that. There's that certificate that we created. You can also use an asymmetric key rather than a certificate here, but we created a certificate, so we're good there. And that's it. We hit OK, and now it's going to back up the database and encrypt it. And there's our message that it was successfully backed up. Now, if somebody were to get their hands on this backup, I'm going to go right into the Nugget Lab directory right here and they took it home or took it to a different SQL Server instance and attempted to restore it, it wouldn't work. They would not be able to restore that backup unless they had access to our keys, which hopefully they don't. Now let's test out the restore to make sure it works on this instance as it should because we have our database master key and our certificate on this machine. What I'm going to do is blow away this table. Let's delete it. All right, it's gone. And now let's restore that backup, which should result in that table coming back to life here. So I'm going to right click on NLDB, head into tasks, head into restore, and uh, we're going to restore database here. So here we're going to restore this over the top of our existing NLDB database. Here is that backup that we took. If we head down here to options, we're going to overwrite that existing database and we also want to close any existing connections to the database. Once we hit OK, that backup is now getting restored over the top of that database and we should be back in business. And look at that. We got a successful restore there. If we open up tables and refresh our employees table, should be back. And there it is. Now, the Transact SQL way of doing that with encryption is just as simple. Backup database specified to disk. We're just going to add a 2 onto the end of this, so it'll be uh, the second backup that we have in that directory. And then we use with encryption, specify our algorithm, specify our server certificate or asymmetric key. And, uh, and this will create that backup. Let's do it. Done. And notice you get a little warning here that the certificate used for encrypting the database encryption key has not been backed up. Yes, you absolutely want to back up these certificates, store them in a secure location, because if anything were to happen to that certificate and you don't have a backup, well, those backups are useless forever. So let's do that next. Here we can use the backup certificate, give it a name and specify your file, and this will give us a backup of that certificate in the same location. And there it is. 
Now, let's do the same thing here. Let's blow away this table. All right, we'll delete it. It's gone. And now let's restore this from that backup that we just took and do a with replace here. Notice we do not need to specify our new media set name. That will happen automatically. So we'll go ahead and hit execute. That will restore the backup. And now if we refresh tables here, employees is back. So as you can see, it's incredibly simple to encrypt our backups using our native backup solution built in to SQL Server. So just remember to create a database master key in the master database and then create a certificate or asymmetric key which you'll use for encrypting your backups. And again, the most important thing here is to back up your certificates or asymmetric keys because you'll need them if you ever want to restore this backup to another SQL Server instance. In the CBT Nugget, we learned how to natively encrypt our backups in SQL Server. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.